I'm a sea king, a CGI king. I'm here to eat and bare my teeth and shake a tail fin. A bikini babe, catching a road wave. A big surprise, I'm gonna rise and flash my tooth cave. All the buff dudes, safe on the beach crew. They're gonna need a bigger boat and bears real soon. I'm a sea king, a CGI king. I'm here to eat and bare my teeth and shake a tail fin. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Bucket of Chum, the Shark Movie Podcast. Oh, let me check something. Yes, I am still hard from hearing the new theme song. Damn. <laughs> and yeah, welcome back. This week, we are talking about Hammerhead from 2005, directed by Michael Oblowitz. Um, this movie is also known as Shark Man from 2001. Uh, as far as I can tell, they're both the same fucking movie. They both have different IMDb pages with, like, pretty much the exact same plot description, so I don't know. I'm going with Hammerhead from 2005, uh, just because the poster is the most accurate <laughs> for what actually happens in the movie, um, even though the title that comes up in the movie is Shark Man. So, yeah, <laughs> like, this movie has two different posters, because it has two different names, obviously. So, when I look at the poster for Shark Man, it has, like, a picture of basically a guy looking over his shoulder. He's got some gills and, like, shark teeth. And, like, that's basically it. That's the Shark Man. But then we look at the Hammerhead poster. It is this sh Hammerhead Shark Man creature. Like, it's way more badass. It's so much fucking cooler than the Shark Man poster. Yeah, that's why I'm going to call it Hammerhead, because this poster is way better. If we're comparing the posters and talking about expectations from the movie, like, when I look at the Shark Man poster, I am expecting something super fucking cheesy, terrible makeup. Like, probably the only makeup they did was, like, paint this dude gray and, like, draw some gills on him, and, like, that's it. But then you look at the Hammerhead poster and, like... It looks way more like a hammerhead human hybrid. So, like, you would expect either very good CGI or, like, very good prosthetic work. So, those are, like, the expectations coming in from the posters. Um, so, yeah, that's something I'm going to do from now on is I kind of wish I had done this with Cocaine Shark. Um, because looking at the poster, like, I have certain expectations for a movie looking at the poster. And then, like, you watch the movie and none of that shit fucking happens. So, I thought it'd be kind of fun. Uh, just kind of talk about my expectations from, like, just viewing the poster, and then, you know, see if those expectations are met by the end of the movie. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the Hammerhead one, because that is more or less how I found out about this movie was through that title. So we're going to go with that. This movie is starring Jeffrey Combs and William Forsythe. Uh, Jeffrey Combs, honestly, if you don't know who this man is, you need to fix that. He's in um, Reanimator, Bride of Reanimator, Castle Freak, like, all kinds of just, like, great fucking movies. Awesome actor. Really chews up the scenery. And he's definitely not playing Herbert West in this movie. But, without further ado, let's dive in. We open up on an island, and a, a title card tells us it's an uncharted island in the Pacific. It's, like, very picturesque. Fucking gorgeous. <laughs> there is a couple standing on the bow of a boat. Um, the couple decides to dive into the water... The shot of the girl diving in is weird. It's like a green screen done in the 80s at a shopping mall or something. It's so bizarre, and, like, even after watching the rest of this movie, it just, it stands out as so bad. Like, I, they could have honestly just left that whole shot out, like, and it would have been fine, but it was just weird. Anyways, they dive in, then we get the title. As I said, when I watch this, the title came up as Shark Man. We see the couple swimming in the water, and then the shark man, like, creeps up behind them and starts attacking. Now, obviously, we don't get a good look at the shark man, but from, like, the quick glimpses, I was, like, immediately impressed with how good it looked. Because, like, from what I could tell, like, it was practical and no CGI. Again, the shots were quick. Like, we see the mouth chomping on an arm and then blood in the water and them panicking. Uh, we see a severed arm sink to the bottom, and then we fade into a lab. So, even just from those quick shots, so 
awesome way to start up a movie. And even impressive still that I'm pretty sure this was a TV movie. And, like, you can definitely tell when you're watching it, like, there's certain breaks in it where it's like, oh, this is where the commercial was. <laughs> but, yeah, otherwise, I was pretty fucking impressed. We see some people suspended in, like, those glass tubes. You know, whenever you see a movie about somebody cloning somebody, they have, like, those bodies in, like, the fucking glass jars. Yeah, there's a bunch of those lying around. There's three scientists hovered around, someone laying on a table. Uh, one of our scientists, of course, is Jeffrey Combs. And one of the other scientists tells him that his son is not responding to the treatment, and he's more shark than man. And then every once in a while, we'll see, like, bits of the shark man in a pool or something. And then on the computer screen, we can see, like, an outline of, like, what his whole body kind of looks like. The bald scientist puts his finger in the tank by accident, and then the shark man nips off, like, two or three of his fingers or something. I think it was two fingers he got. And he yells at uh, Jeffrey Combs, whose character's name is Dr. King, and he goes, See what I mean? He's more shark than man now! <laughs> and then Combs' character, Dr. King, goes to him and tells him they're so close and he's responding to the treatment. Which, I thought they said he wasn't, and then he tells him to send out the invitation... Like, whatever the hell that means. And, like, this man is bleeding and missing a finger. Like, maybe don't bark orders at him just yet. Like, wait for him to, like, stop the bleeding first, at least, you know? And then we cut to an office building in a city. We see William Forsyth, whose character's name is Tom. He knocks on an open office door and says he's there to fix this uh, woman's computer. Uh, the woman at the desk says it's about time. She called over an hour ago. And then Tom just, like, slowly enters the room. And then she finally looks up and says, Oh, I didn't realize they would send the head of the department. He responds that, like, no one else wanted wanted to do it because, like, people find it difficult to work with her. They do some flirty shit. And then they kiss across the desk. He asks her to dinner, and she says she has to work late. He says he loves eating late and just smiles and leaves the office. And But, like, here I am, still wondering if he fixed her fucking computer or not. Did her computer not still need to be fixed? I need answers. <laughs> and, like, how did she not recognize his voice? Like, it's very clear, or at least it was apparent to me that these two are fucking dating in this movie. And then he comes into the office, and, like, I'm sorry, but William Forsythe has, like, a pretty distinctive voice. I can't imagine there's a lot of people in this office building that sound like William Forsythe. It's just, it's not, no. <laughs> Fuck no. Then we cut to a guy on a cell phone talking business bullshit, and he says they're onto something big, and if he doesn't get their check by the end of the day, he's going to someone else because they're in it to win it. Um, so I'm going out on a limb and say he's a bad, douchey businessman. <laughs> uh, the woman from earlier, her name is Amelia. She sits down at the man's desk, and she asks if he's having a rough day, and he's like, oh, never better. And she's like, well, I might just be a biologist, but even I know falling stock prices don't sound good. He said he would be more concerned if they didn't have a new drug coming out. And she says, well, as head of R&D, then I would know about a new drug coming out. And then she asks, like, did you go up behind my back or something? And then he shows her something on his computer. Like, it's a bunch of fucking gibberish with, like, a DNA strand twirling around. And then she asks, like, how long he's been in touch with Dr. King. And then he says, oh, this is the first time I've heard from that crackpot in five years. She looks at it closer and says, like, what is it? And then he shows her some more and then says, We leave tomorrow. I assume that will get you time to crack it? Pfft, yeah, sure. Because, uh, I'm, I'm again, I'm not a fucking scientist, but I'm pretty sure that, like, the, the time of day is, like, probably midday. Maybe it's towards the end of the day. And then it's like, oh, yeah, here's this new DNA code thing. I hope you have time to fucking crack it. What? So then we cut to a boardroom, and Amelia is explaining, or I guess expositioning, what this drug is. And it seems that Dr. King has solved the uh, stem cell dilemma. So he's on the verge of being able to make stem cells, whatever cells he desires, to make a long story fucking short. And she goes on to list like all the benefits this research uh, can do for this drug, and like it can cure Alzheimer's cancer, blah, 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 blah. The big boss man then delegates to everyone to make sure they have worldwide rights to it. And, of course, financial projections, because a major reveal like this needs to be capitalized and not distributed to help the world. Fucking dicks. The boss man then says Amelia has the chance to save the world, and whatever happened between her and King is in the past. And then we cut to a fucking swimming pool, and Amelia is taking a swim. Tom stops by, and they start talking. 
And then he's asking her, like, what happened between her and King, but she, but he doesn't want to speak out of line, but he also doesn't, like, want to pressure her. And then, but he says that, but then he's like, did you have an affair with him? Like, oh, I don't want to cross a line, but I'm just going to ask you if you had an affair with this dude. Like, what? And then she responds with, I was supposed to marry his son, Paul. And then she walks away, and it's like, ooh, ow, dick. <laughs> she tells him Paul died five years ago from cancer. Or did he? We get a voiceover from Jeffrey Combs saying he thinks uh, his serum is almost ready. He starts talking about a new injection they have, and he expects his son will regain his higher brain function while still having the strength of a hammerhead shark. Yeah, he's trying to create a fucking race of shark people, I guess. I feel this sounds familiar. I think we've heard this plot line before. But I think this is probably better executed than whatever other movie I'm thinking of right now. <laughs> They put a woman into some room after injecting her, and then she's, like, stalked by the shark man. We get, like, very quick glimpses of him, like, kind of stalking her. And then we just hear her scream, and we can assume that this bitch is dead. And I don't know what the point of this was. They injected her with something, and then... Oh, now I'm just realizing what it is. Okay, we figured this out later, what he's trying to do. And, yeah, okay, never mind. I got it. <laughs> Tom, Amelia, and, like, a bunch of other people from the office are boarding a plane to the island. And then, back at the lab, Combs narrates again, saying he fears his son won't regain his intelligence, but he has high hopes. And then talks about mixing the shark DNA. And then, then he says, like, imagine the human race living in the world's oceans, starting a new Atlantis. He's Herbert West. Like, that's who this character is, and you cannot tell me fucking different. It's Herbert West. And I'm fucking, I'm all here for it. He gives some rant about all this, and his helper is skeptical. Uh, the woman helper comes in and tells him the next subject is ready. We go to a room, and there's a woman tied down to a hospital bed or operating table. She sounds like she's fucking giving birth, and lo and behold, fucking Dr. King cuts into her, starts pulling some guts out, and then he pulls out like a dead baby shark hybrid fetus. It looked fucking gross and pretty gnarly. Like, it was good. I was impressed that they actually showed this in a TV movie. Because it's like a half-human, half-shark fetus. Like, god damn. But yeah, like, some of the practical effects of this movie were actually very impressive. I, I had a really good time with some of this shit. Dr. King then tells them to do an autopsy because the woman died and so did the baby shark man. Do-do-do-do-do, baby shark do-do. The office people are on a boat, and they head to Dr. King's Island. King tells his men to greet his guests and invite them to dinner. And then he fucking throws a mouse into what looks like a Venus flytrap. So he also has, like, all these plants he's doing experiments on. I, I think he's basically Dr. Moreau. Like, this is the island of Dr. Moreau now. It's like Herbert West's island of Dr. Moreau. So the office people all arrive. They're greeted. They're taken back to King's compound. Um, King and the head of the company, like, shake hands and then, like, talk shit about the past being the past and, oh, it's just business, who cares? King goes up to Amelia and says he wasn't expecting her to show up and she tells him she has his old job and says perhaps, like, it's a good thing that she came. King is introduced to the rest of the gang and then he offers uh, to give them a tour of the compound. He starts showing them around and um, we start off in a greenhouse and he has, like, a bunch of plants that seem to be carnivorous for reasons again like the venus like the venus flytrap i understand but then like there was like an aloe plant it looked like an aloe plant i don't know what it was and then he puts like a worm on it and it fucking eats it insane as soon as i saw it, like somebody was doing that i'd be like i think i'm good whatever research you have i'm good i'm gonna go now <laughs> then king has everyone go to the beach for dinner a bunch of girls come out and put lays on everyone we're all getting laid then we see some dancers, and one dude looks super sweaty or greased up as hell. Like, it, it was just kind of out of nowhere. Like, there are Hawaiian dancers on this island. I don't know how many people King has on this island. Like, I thought he was supposed to be, like, somewhat of a recluse, but, like, he has this massive compound and apparently a fucking army at his disposal. It's crazy. Amelia recognizes King's female assistant, and she leans over and tells Tom that this girl was arrested in Prague last year for, like, 
genetic research or genetic mutation, something to do with fucking genetics. So it totally makes sense as to why she's here. And then I think at this point, everyone is high as fuck because like everything is all dreamlike. And then we have a couple swimming in the water. There's fireworks going off. The couple in the water are eaten by the shark man. And then we're in a meeting room where King is giving a presentation. I don't know who these two people were. I don't know if they were part of the office gang. I don't think so because like nobody from the office really seems to mention them at any point after this. I don't, I don't know. I don't know who they were. I could not fucking tell you. And then, like, the weird, like, dreamlike stuff that I... Again, nonsense. Complete nonsense. (laughs) So, yeah, we're in this meeting room. He talks about sharks and how they can live for a long time and never get sick. And then starts getting into the science of, like, what he's doing. Like, how the stem cells work. Amelia asks, like, how he saw the change in the stem cells. And then he kind of pauses. And then he says his subject had kidney cancer. And then Amelia leans over and tells Tom that Paul, uh, King's son, had kidney cancer. He then explains he mixed shark stem cells and human stem cells or something. It's a lot of science mumbo-jumbo nonsense, but, like, Jeffrey Combs delivering all this is just beautiful. Amelia then asks if Paul is still alive. King says yes, but he's much more than that. And then he opens a blind, and we can see into an aquarium, and we see Shark Man, like, swimming around. The head of the company tells King, like, he's lost it, and he goes to leave, but then King's henchmen, like, pull their guns on everyone. King is mad that they, like, stole his research and made him go into exile, so he's gonna kill them all. His plan is revenge. It was never about showing them the research. Or I guess it's about, like, showing off his research and then being like, fuck you, and then killing everybody. I get it. (laughs) The window to the aquarium starts opening, and the room starts flooding. Um, so King and uh, his men locked uh, the office gang in there. They all head up a ladder as the room starts to flood, and then, like, Shark Man finally gets in the room. Tom starts shooting him under and above water with, like, an AK-47 that was in the room. I think they knocked out one of the guards or something. There was a reason for it to be in there. It, just, it didn't just magically appear. So he hits him a couple of times, uh, like, under and above water. And then Tom manages to climb the ladder and escape from the Shark Man. So the Shark Man has like arms and legs and like maybe not regular hands but you're telling me its weakness is fucking ladders like what is this fucking robocop king watches from the control room as the office gang escape king says they can run but there's nowhere to hide and then king narrates again and says his son's tracking device isn't working now so i'm assuming like probably tom managed to shoot it off but he's informed his men to let the gang go because this is a test for paul Um, He also says he hopes it will make Paul mate. So now I have another question. Does Paul have a shark penis or human penis? Or like some weird combo of both? Or does he have two penises? Like what do they call it on a shark? A cloacia or something? I have questions. I, because I don't think we saw a penis on this, on this animal. I should contact the filmmakers. I need to know about Paul's penis. If anybody has any information about Paul's penis, Please let me know. I have questions about Paul's penis. King thinks once the gang is gone, uh, Paul should evolve. Why? I have zero fucking idea. I have no idea. And now we're with two scuba divers, and I guess they're fixing some underwater fence to keep Shark Man near the islands. But, like, since his tracker is broken, they don't realize, like, he's right there. (laughs) So the Shark Man starts to approach, but they shoot it. The king is pissed, and then he runs out of the control room. And then we cut to the gang. They're trying to get their satellite phone to work, but Tom says King probably has, like, a signal blocker, and they need to disable it, so they need to go to high ground. Now we're in a helicopter. King is back in his control room, and it's the next day. So King tells the chopper to find his son because he won't survive without his treatments, and to bring his guests back dead or alive, except Amelia, bring her back alive. So, like, I guess he slept on it and decided he didn't want to let anyone go after all. Like, I feel like there's a scene missing. Because, like, one second he's like, yeah, and the next second he's like, no. Or that's just the way they wrote it and it's just dumb. I don't know. (laughs) One of the gang's annoying girlfriends, I don't remember her fucking name, is complaining about wanting to go home and, like, what a terrible vacation this is. And it's like, bitch, this was a work event. It's not a vacation. Like, calm down. She slips and falls into a shallow creek and starts yelling, SHARK! They pull her out and Tom yells for everyone to stay away from the water. And we got what looked like a POV from the shark man, but then they run away. 
So does this fucking shark man walk on land or not? Because, like, every time it's, like, oh, yeah, get away from the water. And then it's, like, oh, okay, we're safe. But then, like, later, like, he's clearly walking on land and shit. And, oh, he was walking in that, like, weird greenhouse room earlier. So it's, like, oh, he can walk and use his human parts when it's convenient for the plot, I guess. That's what we're going with. The gang gets onto higher ground, and they see a boat. And one of the women starts yelling towards it. And then Amelia stops her and says it could be a trap set by King's men. And it's like, yeah, this boat is, like, right next to the fucking island. Of course it's probably King's men. Like, you need to steal this shit. Tom the boss and, like, one other guy uh, go to the boat. Because the boss's plan, he says he has more money than King. So basically they're going to try and bribe the captain. But, like, before the dude can even finish talking, the captain pulls out a gun... And then the henchmen on the dock start, like, shooting at them on the boat. So, like, yeah, not even, like, thinking about taking a fucking bribe. They're like, nope, bam, bam, bam. They end up hitting, like, the guys on the dock end up hitting their own men. And, of course, some fuel barrels. So then, like, the three dudes jump off uh, the boat before it explodes. And we see the shark man's uh, fins in the water. Two of them manage to escape somehow so the boss and tom manage to make it back to the dock in time but then a third guy is uh pulled under by the shark man and we see some blood and we see him biting him uh tom swims over with like a spear or something and then he stabs the shark man away he just starts stabbing him and then the shark man swims away like if this shark man is supposed to be so undefeatable and like scary anytime there's like more than one person around it runs away like, this is not as deadly of a creature as, like, Herbert West is fucking making it out to be. Like, <laughs> anyways, they manage to rescue this dude who is somehow still alive, but he's bleeding. The boss wants to leave him there, but Amelia and Tom want to stay and help him. Amelia pulls the boss to the side and insists they help him. She wants to go all the way back to the facility and to get medical supplies. Tom says King expects them to run and might not expect them to go back to the facility, so maybe their plan will work. But, like, he's watching them because apparently this whole island is wired with cameras. So, like, this is... It's all pointless. It doesn't really matter what they do, obviously. So, the boss says no. Him and his wife or girlfriend are going to high ground and try to make the phone work. And everyone else goes back to the compound. The boss and his wife or a girlfriend... I think it's his girlfriend. I'm, we'll just say it's his fucking girlfriend. Are walking through the forest. She mentions, uh, at one point, her shoes are ruined. And it's like, fucking really... I'm, like, the one thing about some of these movies is, like, they always write some of these female characters to be, like, really ditzy and dumb in these situations to the point where it's, like, completely unbelievable. Like, you cannot tell me that anybody in real life in this situation would be concerned about their fucking shoes. There's no fucking way. If there is, if, if you're somebody who is in this situation in real life and you are actually concerned about the state of your shoes, fuck you. I don't care. <laughs> like, no. No. <laughs> There's more important things. Anyways, <laughs> uh, she's pulled to the ground by some vines, uh, like fucking Evil Dead style. And then the boss starts, like, pulling them off and pulls her up and she's fine. So, uh, like... They tease that there's, like, all these deadly plants around, but, like, all it took was for the boss to, like, pick her up and they walk away. So, whatever. But then, quickly, we do see that the shark man is stalking them. Tom and Amelia help the injured man, uh, Bernie, I think his name was, um, with the help of another teammate. Tom notices one of King's men and they brawl in the forest. They end up rolling into a fucking pit and the man is stabbed with, like, sharpened wooden spikes. Somehow, William Forsythe's character managed to escape the spikes, because he's magic. He takes the gun, and they all head to the compound. The boss and his girlfriend head to the high ground, and he says as long as they stay away from the water, they should be fine. They get to the top, and she says she doesn't feel very safe. And then the boss, like, assures her, ah, oh, sharks don't walk on dry land. And this is, like, the point where you would expect, like, the shark man to come up and attack them. Nope. The helicopter appears over the horizon and fires, like, fucking rockets at these two. The boss goes, like, tumbling down the hill. The girlfriend is limping through the forest, and she's being stalked by the shark man. Uh, we only get quick glimpses, but it still looks pretty fucking dope. And then finally, the shark man lunges from the bushes and attacks the girlfriend. And, you know, we see a little bit of blood spraying here and there. The gang reaches the compound, and they look for a way in. Tom starts shooting at the shark man... 
Uh, we only get like a really quick leg shot or a quick head shot of the creature. So it somehow managed to get to this part of the island really super fast. It can run, apparently. It must be able to run if it can get there this fast. So why the fuck? I understand it probably needs to spend the majority of its time in water. But like if it could still run on land, like it should be way more deadly than they're making this. Like, come on. So Amelia's trying to get the door open. Tom comes over and he manages to get it open. The shark man attacks fucking Bernie right before they manage to get inside. And so, like, saving him was completely fucking meaningless, which makes coming back to the compound kind of meaningless, too, because, like, the, their whole thing was to, like, get the medical supplies, I guess. I don't know what their plan is now, but... <laughs> King watches on his screen as the gang enters the morgue. He calls security and tells them to kill the men, but... Uh, or ki kill the man, but keep the women, because he can use them as his test subjects. But now I'm thinking, like, every time he says test subjects, he means, like, mating mates which is just like so much more fucking gross it's all gross it doesn't matter how you put it it's gross we see a bunch of like failed creations in like the giant tubes in the morgue um then they start opening the drawers where they keep the bodies and like this is where amelia figures out king was trying to get the creature to reproduce tom then notices uh there's cameras on the wall and he tells everyone not to move so he disconnects like a camera and then Amelia goes to the computer to figure out how to kill the shark or something. But, like, King already knows they're there. What's the what's the point? You've already been on camera for, like, five minutes at this point. It does not fucking matter. <laughs> like, Jesus. And then Amelia thinks she's found the shark's weakness. Something to do with nitrogen. Insert science jargon here, right? Okay, I don't. you don't need me to fucking explain it. Out in the woods, one of King's men comes across, like, the dead girlfriend. Her arms and legs are, like, strewn about. And he says, huh, one less to worry about. <laughs> so, then we go back to the facility. Tom set a trap for anyone coming into the morgue. So, one of the guards opens the door. Some bottle falls into another tray of liquid. It ignites. The dude catches fire. And now they're outside the facility. They talk about finding the chopper and using the radio to get help. And then we get two guys driving in a jeep on the island. And the CG in one shot was so damn off. Like, it looked like the diving shot from the beginning of the movie again. Which, again, was weird because they probably could have gotten away with just not having this one shot. Somehow, the boss dude is still alive, even having rockets shot at him. <laughs> he crosses the road uh, right before the jeep gets there, and he drops the cell phone. So the two guards in the jeep spot the cell phone, they stop. They start going into the woods, they fight for a bit, but ultimately they capture him and put him in the jeep. And now we're back with King being super fucking weird, and he's talking about, like, the hammerhead's eyes, how they're so far apart, and there's, like, no other creature in nature like that. And again, just talks about how great the hammerhead is in general. And then yells, makes me wonder why these people are still alive. <laughs> like, Jesus. Ah, like he's mad at his son, proud of his son at the same time. I don't know. His assistant, the one who got his fingers bitten off, is starting to look fucking awful. Like he's hunched over and he's looking more and more like fucking Igor, which is just really appropriate for this movie. It's great. I think it's probably intentional, and I'm not sure how many people caught it, but it's, it's fucking awesome. I loved it. As the two guards are driving the boss man back to the compound, the fucking shark man leaps at the window of the jeep and they stop. The shark man kills one of them after a struggle, and we see like a bucket's worth of blood go flying. And then the boss steals a jeep and fucking drives off. King and his assistant are checking out one of his uh, test subjects. He gets a call on the radio, and one of the guards tells King that it got one of his men, and the others are still out there. And the guard says, like, this thing is unstoppable, and, like, he doesn't want to do it. And then King yells, I'll triple your salary, just find him. <laughs> like, everybody's solution in this movie is like, oh, we'll just give them money. Money will solve everything. And fucking so far, it hasn't been working out for anybody. <laughs> so his female assistant says, like, she's just there for the science, like, not his revenge plot. And then she leaves. King says, like, ah, she'll change her mind. But if she doesn't, his son is still out there and she is not leaving this island. <laughs> so the three left of the gang are going through the forest and they spot the boss driving the Jeep. They call his name and he looks over and then he, like, crashes the fucking Jeep. He got distracted for, like, 0.5 seconds and crashed the fucking jeep on a, like, basically deserted fucking island. 
an incredible feat. Absolutely incredible. He tells them uh, his girlfriend Julie was eaten alive. Tom tells them their plan and uh, that they're going to go to the chopper to get the radio. And then he says that they don't need a radio if there's a chopper because he knows how to fly. Because of course he does. A jeep approaches as they go to leave and it's the female assistant. She's spotted by one of the guards and he sends the coordinates to the chopper. She came to tell them that uh, she was there for a cure for cancer, like not all this revenge bullshit. So she wants to help them out. But then the chopper approaches, fires grenades or something at them, like an RPG, rockets, I don't know. One of the jeeps goes like flying into the fucking ocean after it explodes. The boss escapes the other one. Amelia tries to save the woman from the edge of a cliff, but another explosion goes off and causes the woman to fall into the water. And of course, as she does, the shark man is waiting for her. He's he's everywhere. Like, the shark man is everywhere at once. Like, it's crazy. A guard then informs King that, like, this woman is dead, and then he tells the man to make sure, like, nobody leaves the island. King tells Igor to bring his son in. He's been out there for too long. The gang continues through the forest to the helicopter pad. The other woman with them starts like screaming and we see like boils start to form on her skin or something and she says like she's super itchy. So she runs down to the water and starts like washing it off and of course naturally they're like no don't go in the fucking water and she's attacked by shark man because of course. But like I don't understand. Okay don't go in the water but like he can clearly come out of water so like you're not really safe anywhere. So why is it every time they're near water, they're getting attacked? Well, except... I, I think this movie doesn't know what the fucking Hammerhead or Shark Man's abilities are. Like, I think sometimes they just forget. <laughs> so then, finally, we see um, Igor is out in the woods, seemingly tracking the Shark Man down. So I guess the tracking device works now? I don't know. Again, they didn't tell us it was working, and now it's just suddenly working again, so cool. Um, he starts, like, chumming the water and keeps saying, Hungry, you little bastard? Hungry? And then, of course, Shark Man leaps out of the water and starts attacking Igor, rips his fucking arm off. Beautiful-looking effect, too. Practical. Very nice-looking. If this wasn't a made-for-TV movie, like, I bet they have the more gory uh, footage for this. I would love to see a gorier cut of this movie. That would be incredible because it's actually pretty decent as it is, but with like a few extra seconds here and there. Oh, mwah. and then one of the guards comes along. He shoots the shark man with a trank dart. A bunch of dudes rappel down from a helicopter as the gang is still wandering through the forest. Like how big is this fucking island? Like this island feels fucking huge, but it's like, this is supposed to be like some unspecified island, but like if there's an island this big, somebody will have explored it. There's no way that this is just an uncharted island if it's this fucking big. Like, this island seems huge from what I can tell. Tom and the gang start taking the guards out one by one, hand-to-hand -hand combat, shooting at them, whatever. In the lab, a guard lowers the shark man down into some sort of cage or something. King stands over the pool as his guard tries to call him. King then goes on to say he was never capable of that before, and the guard is trying to tell him about the prisoners, I assume, but he's there just, like, coming over his own son. Oh, gross. Yeah, I probably could have worded that better. I'm leaving it in. King strokes the shark man's back and says his son is still in there. The guard then says, like, the prisoners are headed for the helipad, and then King asks, like, what am I paying you for? Go get them. Like, fucking seriously, like, you don't need to sit there and tell King, like, where they're headed. You already know what he wants you to do with them, so just go fucking do it. Just do it! Now there's three boats with gunmen on the water. They spot the prisoners and get into a shootout. They kill everyone on the boats, and, like, one boat smashes into some fuel barrels and explodes. They reach the helipad and make a plan of attack. Another shootout takes place. How our heroes haven't been shot yet, I have no idea. Because, like, when they're shooting at the people on the boat, their aim was impeccable. They got everybody. They got the, guy up, the fuel tanks, the boats, everything. Amazing. And then more shit explodes. This shootout is basically a Michael Bay movie. There's gunshots, a helicopter, shooting grenades, fuel tanks exploding, fucking everything. The boss makes it to the helicopter with Amelia as Tom just keeps fucking shooting everyone. The boss tries to take off without Tom and Amelia punches him just like, no, stop it. The other helicopter lands. 
Tom shoots it enough times to explode it with his gun, which apparently has fucking unlimited ammo in it. Because I don't see him put a new clip into that gun. And, like, he shot, like, fucking... He must have shot, like, 150 bolts or some shit. It's insane. He jumps onto the helicopter. It goes into the air, but it catches fire in the air, so they fucking jump out of it as it explodes. So then some guards come and take them back to the compound. Amelia is tied to a hospital bed as King gives her an injection. King injects her again, but he takes some blood from her. And then Tom swims out to a boat. I have no fucking clue how we got here. How he got in the water, why he's swimming to this boat, no fucking idea. Like, I thought with him jumping from the helicopter when they're like 10 feet off the ground, he would have landed right where the other two were, but nope, somehow he's in the water swimming towards a boat. Again, I feel like we're fucking missing something here. Or maybe, maybe I missed something, I looked away from the screen, maybe, but probably not. Back in the lab, the boss dude is tied to a bed next to Amelia. Tom gathers some fighting supplies from the boat he's on, and Amelia is now in one of those giant tubes. The boss is still tied down. King starts to monologue about his plan, so he's going to use Amelia to be the mother of the shark man's baby. So we can have a little baby shark. Oh, do, 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 baby shark. <laughs> and then the boss tries to bribe King. Like, okay. If this didn't work on, like, a fucking boat captain whose job is probably literally just driving that boat and carrying a gun, if he wasn't going to take your bribe, what the fuck makes you think that King is going to take your bribe? Like, okay, obviously King says no. <laughs> and then King says since Amelia and Paul such had such a strong connection before, he believes that she can bear his children. I am doubting the science here. <laughs> She keeps trying to tell King that that thing is not Paul anymore. And then she asks King, like, are you going to impregnate me? And he says, no. And he slowly looks over, and then we pan over to the tank holding Shark Man. And King says, he is. So I'm, I'm back with the penis question. Does he have two penises? Does he have one penis? Collo 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 colloquia? Colloquia? Colloquia. I can't remember. Shark penis. I don't know. Again, if anyone has any information on Paul's penis, please feel free to contact me. King's men unties the boss and puts him in the tank with Shark Man, and Shark Man eats him, of course. Tom is going through the greenhouse now, making his way back to the lab, and he starts pouring some blue liquid into uh, some tanks or something. Tom takes a guard out with a spear gun, and now we can see, like, the blue liquid is tied onto his back, and I thought at this point he had made a flamethrower, but it's not. King lowers Amelia into the shark tank for some sexy times. King gets close to the tank, and the shark man leaps up and rips his arm off. A guard tries to shoot him, but he rips his arm off as well. A second guard shoots into the tank. Tom comes in and fucking shoots him. Holy fuck, man. Just left and right people are dying here. He goes up to Amelia... And when the shark man lifts his head, Tom sprays all that, like, blue liquid shit into his mouth and face. I'm guessing, I didn't get a chance to read the label, but I'm guessing there's, like, nitrogen in this. Because earlier they were talking about, like, the nitrogen bubbles and people and, like, that maybe this is the shark's weakness is the nitrogen or something. So that's what I think this is. And that's what we're going to go with. So Tom gets Amelia out. He sprays him again. And we then we hear a gunshot and his head explodes. The, the shark man's head explodes. So like he spent all this time getting this blue liquid shit when all he had to do was shoot him in the head. Or unless the nitrogen helped that, I don't really know. But uh, a lot of that just kind of seemed pointless. <laughs> they decide that they need to destroy the facility. So they start going room to room, smashing shit, shooting shit up. And then... While Amelia is doing some shit, King comes back and holds her hostage at gunpoint with his one arm. But, like, I don't have much faith that he can hold and shoot an AK-47 with just one arm. I highly doubt that. Me, I don't know. It's still pretty fucking dangerous, but I, I feel like he could still take him out. <laughs> Not that it matters, because Tom comes up behind him and just shoots him and says, Huh, like father, like son. <laughs> so, they start shooting the place up. It catches fire, room by room the place explodes, until our heroes run outside from a terrible CGI explosion. And then Tom and Amelia have a heartfelt moment on the beach, and that's pretty much it. 
that is pretty much all of Hammerhead. The cons of this movie, I wish we could have seen more of the full shark suit, um, longer shots of the shark, maybe some more of the gore because I feel like there was probably more that they had to cut because it's a TV movie. So I feel like there's probably more to offer there. And I, yeah. So I think it would be really cool to see a different cut of that. Um, but hey, the things I loved about this fucking movie, the effects were awesome. The shark man looked dope. Even though some of the CGI shots were distracting in parts, it was used pretty sparingly and in parts it actually didn't look that bad. It was action packed, like there was always something happening. Uh, William Forsyth was in it, completely bonkers plot. Oh, and Jeffrey Combs, like, oh, he makes this, him and William Forsyth make this movie. Actually, no, I shouldn't say that because the Shark Man, like the effects for the Shark Man were really good. So, but I mean, hey, Jeffrey Combs, we fucking love Jeffrey Combs here. So it was really good to see him. And yeah, he was, he was Herbert West. He, that's all he was playing. So, you know, overall, like this movie was bonkers, but I had a blast with it. Like, I really want to get a copy of this movie. That's not super expensive, but for some reason in Canada, I can't really fucking find it. So going back to the posters, did it meet expectations? I mean, I would say this movie definitely meets expectations based on the posters, but depends on the poster. If you're basing it off of the Shark Man poster, then it looks like it would be awful. Like, you would not, and you definitely don't get what you, you sort of get what you expect, but not really based on the visuals. But now, with the Hammerhead poster, I mean, just based on that poster, I pretty much got what I wanted, what I expected from the movie. So, I mean, no complaints there. This poster and the movie actually live up to each other. And that was Hammerhead or Sharkman from 2005 or 2001. I don't know. Anyways, that's it for this week. Tune in next week for another episode of Bucket of Chum. As always, you can follow me on all of the social medias. We got Slasher, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, all at Bucket of Chum Podcast. I've also recently uploaded all of my episodes onto YouTube, so you can check out at Bucket of Chum Podcast on YouTube. And if you have any movie suggestions or you just want to send me an email, send me an email, bucketofchumpodcast at gmail.com, and I will see you guys next time for a brand new episode of Bucket of Chum. (laughs) 